Hi, I'm Gonzalo Martel from Argentina. Thank you for having me. I'm going to talk about rotational guided growth. It is a preclinical study. In the last six decades, bone growth manipulation has been used successfully for treating discrepancies and angular deformities, such as blount with staples, Matisseau with transficial screws, and, Steven, and Peter Stevens from USA with the eight plate. Hypothetically, rotational deformities can also be corrected manipulating the growth plate. For this purpose, we designed an implantable device called percutaneous progressive derotator, PPD. The main goal of this study is to demonstrate that rotational guided growth can be generated manipulating the growth plate in large animals by means of minimal invasive surgery. This technique will allow us to correct rotational deformities as femoral or tibial torsion seen in CP, arthrogryposis, or miserable malalignment syndromes. This correction can be, can be made by mean invasive surgery with the benefits of short time surgery, less tissue damage, less blood loss, less pain and short recovery. The, the PPD is a device built with two five millimeter diameter cannulated screws and a multi-filament cable, which holds the screws together in a closing loop. In the metaphyseal screw cannulation, both ends of the cable are set in opposite direction and then locked inside with the cutter. A multifilament cable was chosen because it is 300% stronger than a solid metal bar of the same diameter. These are different views of the bone model with the PPD in it. At the top of the slide, we see the medial front and lateral views. The physis is represented here with the yellow line. At the bottom is the axial view of the same bone model with guide wires inside the PPD's screws showing a crossing angle. This crossing angle is directly proportional to the rotational capacity of the PPD in this specific configuration. This animation shows how the, the, the PPD work. While the bone is growing, the PPD changes its shape, leading to rotation. Uh, the calf metacarpal was chosen for the in vivo animal model because its shape, its shape, biomechanics, and are similar to those of a human knee. We use eight-month-old calves, and the PPD was applied on the right metacarpal, leaving the left side as contour. The PPD was applied in an external rotation configuration with a crossing angle between 35 and 55 degrees. After three months, the PPD was removed and the calves were left for follow-up for two years. This is the surgical technique. We start the surgery using two millimeters diameter wire, one set one centimeter proximal and the other one centimeter distal to the physis both wire parallel in the parallel planes between each other and the physis. After that, four small incisions were made at the points where each wire exited the skin. Then two self-tapping screws were inserted. A one millimeter, 1.5 millimeter cable 
was passed all the way through the epiphyseal canal. The cable was then passed subcutaneously to enter into the metaphyseal screw canal for either side. Cable pacing, uh, passing the cable is a little bit tricky. It is more like, like this in order to, to keep the surgery as less aggressive as possible. And this allow you to, to do the whole surgery with just these two very small incisions. This is the final appearance of the limb after surgery. This is the follow-up of one sample. Uh, the top are AP x-ray views from the beginning and after one and third month before the PPD was removed. At the bottom, there are the lateral x-ray showing the changes over time. Those are uh, panoramic views of the same bone before and after rotational guided growth. At the bottom of the picture, you can see how the, the digits are less overlapped after the rotational growth. Every group of bar represents the rotational alignment devolution from the beginning to the third month in each individual before the implant removal. At the bottom is the average rotation achieved around 24 degrees in an external rotation. This is the amount of rotation relative to the bone growth in length. The more the bone growth, it seems that it rotates more. This graph compares the metacarpal length between the operative side in orange and the control side in yellow from each individual. No significant differences was found between sides. Then after removal of the, the implant, the calves, the group, the samples were followed for two years. So after two year follow-up, the four limbs were harvested. Transverse CT slides were taken at both ends of every metacarpus. And the rotational profile was measured and compared to the control side it was observed that only some of the rotation obtained was maintained in only 25% of the operated bones in an average of seven degrees. This is the rotational evolution from the beginning to the third month when the implant was removed, and then the final alignment after two years follow-up. So in conclusion, rotational correction can be gradually generated in growing bone by means of minimal invasive surgery. Gradually generated rotation does not generate discrepancies or angular deformities, at least in this series. After two year follow-up, only 25% of the sample remain with the, an average of seven degrees of external rotation. in many experiments, new questions come up. For example, is the rebound phenomenon after rotational correction greater than that seen in angular corrections? And how much rotation can you get before discrepancies occurs? Which would be the best age to apply the PPD technique in humans? 
and how much overcorrection would be necessary to achieve the desired correction. Thank you very much. <laughs>